A decade ago, a novel way of removing the fleece from sheep was being hailed as the wool industry's next big thing. Bioclip, or biological wool harvesting, involved injecting the animals with a protein which caused the fleece to break at the skin. But with dwindling interest from wool growers, Bioclip has been taken off the market. At first blush, this would appear to be a normal shearing scene. Take a closer look and you'll see these three-month-old lambs are wearing nets. Not for long, though. Gary Cull is removing wool the bioclip way. Just cut the net off, straight up the neck, and just pulling the net out, going straight down the belly, straight down through the belly, out each back leg, across the crutch, straight through the other back leg, turn the sheep over, and he's pretty much out of the net, and he can run out, straight out and down the porthole. A month earlier, this South Australian wool and meat producer had injected the young composite breed ewes with a gel that had caused a break in the fleece. The nets were put on to hold the wool in place and allow the new fleece to start growing back. It all seems very sci-fi, but the inspiration for this novel approach to wool harvesting goes way back to 1956 with a letter to the CSIRO from a New South Wales farmer. Dear Sir, with industrial trouble in the wool growing industry, one looks for alternative methods of removing the fleece. We all know that a break in the fleece is caused naturally through illness, drought, etc. And with that in mind, I would be pleased to know whether, in your opinion, research into a method of causing a complete break in the fleece without any injurious effects to the fleece or sheep would be worthwhile. It set researchers at the National Science Organisation down a path that led them to a protein found in the urine and saliva of sheep, a substance which made the fibre break at skin level. You see the children now shearing a sheep? Very stressful occupation for them. Causing the wool to fall off the animal was one thing, but keeping it in place so it could be collected proved to be another challenge leading to some comical and costly solutions, as then owner of Bioclip, John LeBreton, told me in 2003. Well, the very first best dress sheep wore fine lycra and uh, Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was a, a very substantial structure, as you can see. Um, uh, and inside, there were layers of hooks to hold the wool uh, in, in place so they didn't all fall down around the sheep's belly. $140, very time consuming to fit. 10 guys could probably do 50 sheep in a day. When Landline filed that first report 12 years ago, farmers were just beginning to come on board. They were being encouraged to inject their own lambs and encase them in what was then an upgraded, elasticised wool retention net. The legs were left uncovered. The nets could only be fitted to sheep up to 50 kilograms, which did rule out a lot of the flock. But the comparison between lambs that had been shorn and those that were bioclipped was stark. The wool growers who were brave enough to give bioclip a go raved about the results. Not trying to sway anybody else, but um, I would, would not shear a, a lamb on this place again. Would not shear one. For merino lambs, I wouldn't do anything else. Perfect. You wouldn't go back to shearing them? No, certainly not. You don't get the amount of wool that you can get this way. You injure them with skin cuts and uh, it's just, for me, it's not an option. I'd only ever buy a clip merino lambs. It's just animal health and everything to do with it, Prue, is just so good and you, you'll see the end product, what comes out, it is just superb. We saw that there were uh, second cuts were eliminated, so it meant that staple length of the fibre was uniform across the fleece. Um, and so there was more wool in the top line, there was more fleece wool in the top line. Um, there were no skin cuts, so there was no pelt damage, uh, no teat damage or vulva or pizzle damage. 
um, and uh, less risk of cheesy gland and, uh, and arthritis. When Gary Lyons saw the quality of the lambs post-treatment and the clean fleece, he wanted the company he has a share in to be a part of the action. By 2008, Heinegger had secured the distribution rights for the Bioclip system. In some areas of Australia, as is well known, there is a shortage of shearers, so Bioclip, uh, we believe, could afford some flexibility to the wool grower. The injectable protein is actually made by the soy sauce and fermentation company Hygita Shoyu in Japan. It's a completely synthesised copy of the naturally occurring protein scientists at the CSIRO had discovered all those years ago. As long as it's not inflicted on pregnant ewes or sheep in poor condition, it has, according to Heinegger Australasia's managing director, proven to be safe and very effective. Epidermal growth factor, uh, if injected in the animal, the, the result is that there's a, a, a concentrated level of EGF within the bloodstream for approximately 16 to 18 hours. What EGF does is it slows down the cell division at the base of the wool follicle. This stunts the growth of the fibre and causes a break, which in actual fact it mimics, if you like, that that occurs uh, in cell shedding breeds. Ironically, it's the self-shedding breeders who became the main embracers of Bioclip. Consider myself a fairly clean shearer, but it's cleaner. <laughs> it does a nice job, you know, like it, it uh, there's no nicks, cuts, uh, very little stress on the sheep. Nick Hudson has a white dorper stud and manages up to 5,000 of the meat sheep out the back of Dubbo. Believe it or not, there is dorper hair under all that wool. When the hardy meat sheep were first brought into the country, breeders often crossed them with merinos to build up the numbers. So they ended up with animals that had a mix of wool and hair. Should we grab this big woolly one? There you go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all them, you can see all the medulated fibre on this sheep. That yes, here. yeah. Even though she's only a first cross, um, that's why she's going to be able to be bioclipped and protected. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that won't, that, that'll be still there when all this long fleece, she's probably got, she could have three years wool and I've been running out in the back block. Within 10 days, the wool, but not the hair, will fall out. The protein will pass through the animal system within 48 hours and the withholding period for slaughter and eating the meat is seven days. Because the wool has no real value, dorper breeders don't bother with netting their sheep. It's one of the reasons Bioclip has become so popular among these guys. They don't need to handle them twice. We find it very good. I mean, three of us can do 1,500 ewes in a day. And uh, that just cuts down time and labour and the stress and everything, you know, they come in, they're gone. And if you were shearing, what would it take? Probably three days. Mm. And a whole team. Yeah. And this is how they look after the treatment. The former full-time shearer bioclipped these girls a few months back. So this lot are off to market now because they're nice and clean for market? Yes, yeah, they're all to use. Mm -hmm. Cleaned up, tidy enough so we'll send them into market, yeah. I think it provides a great management tool for, uh, for shedding sheep uh, uh, breeders, farmers. But there is a caution. Uh, because they are looking to remove uh, unwanted fibre that has no value, uh, they have uh, little interest in netting the animal. If there isn't sufficient hair cover or medulated fibre left after the bioclip process, then the animal is exposed to the severe Australian uh, environment and sunburn uh, can, uh, can prevail. And that's the thing about the nets. They're not just there to collect the wool, but also to keep it in place until a new protective fleece starts to grow back underneath. Trouble is, the nets have been both the solution and a mighty problem. The early nets didn't work well enough at retaining the valuable fibre. 
And while the process of pulling off the so-called woolly jumper was easy enough, plucking the wool out of the elastic was a right royal pain. I had a massive pile of nets in the shed that, you know, I initially I was going to do it as I went, but it just so like took me so much time. A merino man and stud breeder near Border Town in South Australia, Richard Halliday is also the new president of the industry's peak body, Wool Producers Australia. About six years ago, we bio clipped um, all our ram lambs. Just wanted to see what they'd come up like, and you know, bring brought them in, needled them, netted them, then come back and took the nets off. They come out brilliant, you know, they're just perfect. There's no ridges where a shear had ran high. Come up to sale time, you know, you just, they were just spot on. They look really good. 62 and a half. Sounds like the sort of result that would bring him back to buy a clip, doesn't it? But no. After weighing up the expense and the hassle of having to handle the lambs twice, firstly for injecting, then for removing the nets, Richard Halliday didn't continue with Bioclip. And he doesn't know of any of his members who have persisted with it. It worked well, but I, there was issues for me which brought me back to shearing. How do you go two ways? The right way the wrong way. <laughs> the owners and distributors of biological wool harvesting have worked hard to iron out some of the issues which have plagued the process. So you pull it straight down from there, pull his backbone straight to the bottom. And the, same the cradle was improved to make it more portable. The company commissioned videos that explained the system. Green net. A scale was included, taking the guesswork out of finding the right size net. Put around behind his ears. Make sure his ears are out. The nets Gary Cole peeled off earlier this year were vastly better than previous models in terms of holding the fibre on the sheep. Gary's teenage daughter Grayson was able to simply stretch the fleece over a purpose-built table to extract the wool. Once again, a much simpler, more efficient process than before. More user-friendly, you could say. Back in the old days, it was yeah, it was just a nightmare, and that to get it out. But these developments dribbled in too late. Over the years, wool growers have abandoned the technology. There was an attempt in 2010 to inject more capital via a share float, but it was undersubscribed. So in mid-2013, Bioclip was withdrawn from the market. Can you tell me more, please, why? You know, like, we need it. The reason was that um, we believed that Bioclip was still very much in an R&D phase. Uh, it had been introduced uh, prematurely. Gary Cull in Mount Gambier and Mick Hudson near Dubbo are among the last few producers still using Bioclip. About the last of it. I've got a few doses left for my own use. Um, Both of them have squirrelled away old supplies of the juice, as they sometimes call it, to eke out a couple of extra seasons. And I understand that you've already had someone asking whether they can buy it off you. Yeah, I had a guy from Western Australia ring me uh, probably two months ago, and yeah, he's wanting to. Um, to buy some off me because he knew that I had a bit left. So, but it's like you know, it's like gold at the moment. So I think I'll keep it for my own use because who knows when I'll be able to get some more. This hands-on sheep man is an example of the sort of farmer Heinegger thought would take up by a clip. Someone who was prepared to do his own flock, making it comparable in cost to shearing. Trouble was, most wool growers wanted to bring in contractors and that blew the budget. The failure was that uh, the grower has uh, historically been used to uh, bringing in a shearing contractor uh, to, uh, to carry out the service of uh, wool harvesting and uh, that was a real challenge for us and, and I have to say that, uh, that the grower resisted uh, and uh, continued to look externally for uh, the provision of uh, the bioclip process. The EGF gel and the net came to around $6.50 a unit. With contract labour charges of $3 to $4, the price per sheep was up to $10.50. 
a young animal could be shorn by a contractor for $7.50 or less. Get the cost down, I think, you know, it would be ideal to, you know, I think more people would take it up. Maybe, but there are other limitations, including that the system could only ever deal with smaller sheep. The nets just couldn't hold the wool on the back of the larger framed animals. Yeah, well, I shore for 17 years and shore a lot of big sheep and... I mean, most shearers aren't big blokes. I mean, if you're dragging out a 120 kilo animal and you're right in your 70 or 80 kilos, I mean, it's a lot of stress on the body, you know? I think there'd be a... I think if, the, you know, it'd be great to do rams. I mean, they... They get no nicks on them. The shearer doesn't have to fight with them. Um, yeah, I think it's just a cradle and a noodle. And I mean, I think it'd be great for rams, just less stress on the shearers, you know? Calls for Bioclip to be available for rams is, of course, all academic now. The program has come to a grinding halt. Heinegger's managing director is disappointed with the level of interest from wool industry bodies. Frankly, none. We'd be delighted to uh, talk to any in industry uh, uh, interested parties, not only from industry, but anyone that can uh, deliver some life to buy a clip. Uh, we're very keen to talk to them. In the meantime, hundreds of thousands of nets have been put into storage here in the Adelaide warehouse of Heinegger. These are the new improved models. They sit here as a reminder of the blood, sweat and tears that went into trying to solve that perennial problem of safely and efficiently removing the wool from the sheep's back. Heinegger is not confident that these nets will ever be used in the manner for which they were intended. Well, I'm optimistic, Prue, and I'd like to think that that is the case. However, I'm a realist, and uh, unless we can uh, encourage more uh, merino wool growers to actually undertake the bioclip process themselves, then uh, it is always going to be compared to conventional shearing. Um, and uh, I'm afraid that the fleece retention mechanism as we know it today, perhaps its days are numbered and we'll have to look outside the square for a better solution or an alternative. There's talk of a polymer being sprayed over the animal, a sort of hairspray. Or maybe a type of vacuum cleaner could suck the fleece from the sheep. Either way, it takes money and the will of wool growers to try something new.